And welcome to Bill and Eamon's Bogus Hangout. We have an abbreviated show today. We're going to be down half an hour or so, I think. I have uh, everybody introduce themselves. Doc? Hello, everybody. Doc Sheldon here of Intrinsic Value SEO and Search News Central. Terry? Terry Van Horn, retired. And I'm Bill Slosky of SEO by the Sea, and I'm the director of SEO research at GoFish Digital. Uh, so, been busy on Twitter today. I, I've been staying away from Facebook for some reason. Facebook is, I, I remember when I used to log into an SEO forum every day and be an administrator and, and uh, answer uh, questions like, what is this page rank again to uh, people who call themselves SEO uh, expert or SEO ninja? <laughs> Yeah, I just uh, just signed a client. Where do I start? <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I remember asking those guys how how many weeks they'd been doing SEO. It's optimistic, really. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, when you first saw SEO, what did you think of it? When I first saw it. I remember I, first seeing SEO. I thought it was complicated as hell when I first saw it. I came across an SEO forum where people were having arguments over the perfect ideal keyword density for a page. Yeah. That really puzzled me. Yeah, but back then there was actually a search engine where that was a big part of it. That was exciting. Yeah, but Which, everybody was, was already pretty much focused on Google, too. I mean, Google wasn't even around at the beginning. I, I think Google said more before there was a Google. There, there's still people swearing up and down that Google looks at keyword density. And some of them are even stupid enough to quote a number. <laughs> Yeah, no comment to that. <laughs> I know, and I'm, I'm seeing people publishing articles about how to add LSI keywords to pages. And, and they're citing going to the Watson Natural Language uh, uh, Processing API and using that to get your LSI keywords. And it's like, when did IBM start producing LSI keywords? The, ah, uh, Jesus. <laughs> well said, Terry. <laughs> Pretty much so. Like some of this stuff is so freaking goofy, I don't even know where to start. <laughs> yep. Like, I understand that it, it is new. Like, to someone who's just starting out right now, Yeah. They don't have a lot to go on because most of what's out there is complete and utter bullshit. And if, if you've got somebody who ranks well for some really competitive terms and they sprout nonsense on a regular basis, you're going to look at the rankings and say, maybe this guy has some idea what they're talking about. Well, you know, when I first started out trying to, to figure out, you know, I had never heard of SEO. Yeah. And I tried to try to figure out what it was and what it involved. The first thing I did is I started looking for the bloggers that were the most prolific writers that got a lot of mentions and retweets and apparently had some sort of credibility in the industry. And I started following what they said. It didn't take too long to figure out that a, a lot of those guys, you know, take two or three of these prominent names disagreed on a lot of things. So you had to figure out which one, if, if any of them, had their facts straight. And then it, it turned out that a lot of these guys that were among the most prominent were the most full of shit out there. And so Even, that, was, that was the way I started. And it was definitely a false start. And after about eight or ten months of that, I said, this is stupid. Yeah. 
you know, because even I, for people out there who are trying to hire an SEO, it's even harder. Oh, yeah. Because you go to say a presentation yeah. and you get some really well known guy who really knows his stuff. And a lot of times he's just a mouthpiece for the company that he's working for. And uh, the people who actually work there don't know nothing. I, I mean, they don't know nothing and they're handling contracts way over their head. Like, oh, wow. Well, uh, no, yeah, no, no, no. I could get into trouble if I started uh, really going down the, that path. But, uh, yeah, um, it's really tough for people who are hiring. They, uh, you know, that's what I don't agree with a lot of people in the industry, that expecting people to be able to hire and and know what to ask an SEO. Well, if they know what to ask you, do they really need to hire you? Only if they don't have time to do it themselves. Uh, well, that's, I that's think, why. I think a lot of the questions though, Terry, you know, knowing what questions to ask and, and hearing what you come back with will give me an indication if you Yeah, are, but you know what, what you're doing, right? You actually know how to do it. No, but I'm talking right? about a site owner, a business, you know, some. Yeah, but some most of them to learn what it would, how to ask the right questions, they don't really need an SEO. They already know what it takes. Well, that's like saying, you know okay. enough SEO to know the right questions to ask somebody who might do SEO on your site. You probably know enough SEO to do the SEO on your site yourself. I don't necessarily agree because well, I, I definitely I don't do. necessarily agree with that. But some of these guys who who are blogging, doing SEO blogging, are so clueless. Oh yeah. No, but my my point would be like, for instance, you know, I'm not a code monkey, Terry. I I can drop snippets and you know edit them, but I'm not a. I can't sit down and write a Python script, okay, or or a JavaScript without doing a lot of Googling. But I do know enough to ask a coder, how would you do this? What would you do to accomplish that? And know whether or not he has some clue of what he's talking about, or if he's got his head totally up in the cloud. That doesn't mean I can do it. And I think that to an extent, the same thing is, is true with SEO. A lot of it, yes, but not all of it. Like for instance, you know, I focus mostly on check SEO. There's an awful lot of stuff in tech SEO that, that a person could ask me, can you accomplish this? Can this be done? How would you do this? And be able to judge whether or not I know what I'm talking about. But they wouldn't be able to just sit down and do it. They wouldn't know how to accomplish it. They would just know some educated guest questions to determine whether or not I was totally out of the left field. And I said, yeah, I just don't think that it's realistic to say that if, if you know what questions to ask, then you don't need an SEO. SEO is different than programming. Well, everything's different from everything. But the thing is, yeah. I'm just saying, if, if, if you just because you know some intelligent questions to ask does not mean, I know questions to ask a surgeon before I accept his recommendation of a surgery. But I goddamn well can't do it. You know? Most uh, of, if you knew uh, the right questions to ask, right? If you knew the right questions to ask, all you'd have to do then is go to a web designer and say, do this, this, and this. Because yeah. 90% are, I wouldn't say 90, but a very big part of SEO is the developer, is the development of the website. Yeah, right? I agree with that. Yeah. Right. So, um, and, and like that's where the the site owner has an advantage because he knows his business right that's why i if i don't understand a business within 10 or 15 minutes of talking to a client i would never take them because i didn't understand their business enough to actually do the work correctly yeah. right and you can tell that in 10 or 15 minutes by the questions you, you ask them. And that's part of it too, right? For as far as uh, hiring an SEO, it's the same thing, right? Yeah. If, you're, if, if you 
ask them, uh, this is what I want. And they tell you, well, you do this, this, and this. And it doesn't include anything, any of your goals, like improving this product in particular, right? I have a problem with this product. How would you fix it? And they give you the same answer for everything. Wow. No, no, no. Then they're just parroting something they read on. They're what I call a sledgehammer SEO. <laughs> your, your client should be your subject matter expert, or they should be able to point you to some. Yeah. And if they're not able to answer your questions about their business, it's going to make doing SEO for them really difficult. Yep. And it's amazing how many prospects that we talk to that have never even thought about the answer to some of our standard questions. Yeah, that's why I always say when I was working with SEO pros, I, I'd say to the client, if the guy only talks about what he can do with, for you and doesn't really ask questions about your business, run, don't walk. Yeah, exactly. Well, that's what I was like, you know, I used to see this when I was a business consultant. The only, you know, the, the, the guys up in the C-suite, their whole justification for the cost center of customer service was just to keep complaints from escalating. Put out the fire. That's all that they, they didn't see the value that they could get, you know, talking to them about what the pain points were for their clients and what new features might might be attractive to their customer. They just saw them as, you know, as long as the complaints are never getting to my desk, they're doing a good job. It's worth the money we're spending on. And I, you know, it's amazing. I talk to new prospects. How many of them have no clue what are the pain points of their clients? A lot of them can't even tell you who their ideal customer is. Where's their niche? What's their, their market slice that they really could be make a killing on? Hey, oh, that's a good question. I never thought of that. Ah. <laughs> how are you still in business? <laughs> when you Ask start them, um, your startup, sometimes it's uh, uh, something you have to work with the client to define because they're not always quite sure. Well, on a startup, it's understandable. On a 12-year-old corporation, that's a little, it's a little <laughs> <laughs> So who have you been selling to in the last 12 years? About, about 20 years ago, I had a Fortune 100 company for a client. Yeah. They could not tell you. They did not know. The CEO could not tell you who was their target market. Not their ideal client, their target market. Basically, his answer was whoever has money in their wallet. I had a I had a, a Fortune 50 company. I asked, "Who, who is your audience?" I ended up getting a 280-page long book. <laughs> it got 14 different profiles, and it's like these are the people you develop TV ads for, newspaper advertisements. These are the profiles you use for those. The people who are your clients on the web are the people who move to a new location and need cable or start a business and need cable. And that's it. Mm -hmm. It's not these 14 profiles. Those aren't, aren't your clients on the web. That also tells you a PR agency was involved at some <laughs> point. <laughs> yeah. That's how they charge the big bucks. Well, you need 14, not two. You need, you need radio spots and TV spots and print and billboards and, you know, all these upsells. <laughs> yeah. And we need the uh, cross-channel promotions, right. You know, there's, there's an awful lot of things about, you know, marketing basics that are the same for the last hundred years, whether you're print face-to-face -face or online. But there's also a lot of stuff to online marketing that is totally new and unique. Yeah. So yeah. what about companies that have uh, reusable products? Ask them, what's the value of a customer? <laughs> yeah. Not a clue. True. Yeah, you know, the lifetime value, yeah. yeah. That's And that's probably their most important exactly. metric. Exactly. As far as advertise any kind of advertising goes, 
the reason there's a reason why the customer chose them once. And if you can keep them happy, they'll choose you again. And we'll talk about you and recommend you. Yeah. And yeah, it's a sort of a basic of marketing. So marketing is is that you know, uh, marketing in web clothes. I didn't catch that, Bill. Is, is SEO marketing in web framework? Mm. Wow. Do, Some do people have, put that all in. Like, do any concepts behind marketing apply to SEO? Some of them don't work real well. Like there's a concept of first mover. The first mover in an industry, usually in the real world, is the one that tends to be difficult to topple and take the place of. On the web, Google was a 21st search engine. What happened to the previous 20? Yeah, anybody who thinks there's loyalty on the internet yeah. should have their head examined. <laughs> Because there is no loyalty on the internet. That would require two personalities, to, uh, you know, for, for some kind of interaction. Or, uh, you know, I, I just think when people uh, are on the internet, it's 90% price. Remember when TVs had channels? They had like 13 channels and dial. We're long past those days. Mm -hmm. You have an uh, endless number of addresses. You know, that, and that's a really good point, too, Terry. You know, it's just like, you know, the brick and mortar mom and pop shop down there that, that you go into every other Saturday where you know the owner operator. And even if it's a product you're only going to use once in a, every couple of years, if, if you establish some sort of a friendly relationship with the guy, he's going to stick in your mind. When you need that again, you're probably going to go back there. If you had a good experience with him, if you liked the guy, if you found the product usable and price reasonable, you know, all these things that come into play, but that personality aspect, you know, you can synthesize a certain degree of that with engagement online, but you can't replace it. It's just, it's gold. And, you know, these guys that, that are blogging about how you, you can – basically replace that sort of relationship by your voice on your blog and by your customer service online. You know, I'm sorry, your chat bot ain't going to do that for you, buddy. I'll, I'll, you know what, Doc? The new thing with that, our social media influencers are now taking over that place. Well, to, they're trying to, to a degree. Oh, I think they have. They're not going to, they're not going to. Oh, the like, Kardashians and those kind of people. Yeah. They're selling millions of dollars worth of products. You understand? One of those girls is a billionaire. Mm -hmm. a, a, a billionaire selling her own products. And it was all through social media. Yeah. Like, it's huge. And you know what? Millennials now, that's what they're looking at. The, you know, they don't use search engines that, as much as we would. A younger person is going to use Facebook, YouTube, yeah, uh, Instagram, all, all those sort of things are, you know, someone they're following, that kind of thing, right? Uh, things are changing and, uh, you know, I think it, people are slowly realizing it, uh, but, you know, I'm actually thinking of shutting down some Facebook pages and stuff. Well, because Facebook, I have thousands of followers, but, you know, when I post something, six people see it. What the frick is up with that? But if I pay... Oh, well, yeah, then, you can promote it, and then 15 will see it, yeah. Uh, <laughs> oh, no, I, they're pretty good that way. If you have a large number of followers, you, and you, when you boost it, it doesn't do too bad. It can... I, I did one as a test here about four or five months ago. I did it for like 
uh, three or four weeks running. I had 770 some followers, and I was, you know, without boosting, I was seeing 11 people saw your post, 13 people saw your post. I boosted it for 20 bucks, 59 people saw my post. 59 people was a peak out of 770 for 20 bucks. No. Yeah, that That's that bullshit. That wasn't my experience when I did it. It it would get a small amount, and then once I boosted it it would be shown to over a thousand more people oh. if I boosted it again and go even higher. It, uh, it did climb after, after the first one when I boosted it a second time. It did go up some more, but the highest we ever got was to 59. Uh, I didn't have uh, I actually ended up getting more, uh, more uh, impressions than I had users. Maybe it was just a shit post I put up. <laughs> that could be part of it, uh, Doc. <laughs> not, you know, not saying uh, nothing. I think that has something to do with it, too. Well, I just, you know, it, it struck me at the time I went back and I looked over the last week prior to that, and I thought, Christ, I was averaging 40 some people a day, different people a day that I was interacting with on Facebook. So, you know, knowing that their algorithms are going to focus more on people, you know, less on people that you hardly ever interact with and more on people that you interact with more often, I figured, okay. So I went back and looked. And I was, you know, sometimes as many as 70 different people in a day, sometimes as little as 40 or 35 in a day. But I was averaging like 42, 44, something like that every day over that week. That I was unique individuals that I was interacting with, and it was going to show them to 59. Yeah, I might as well just take that 20 dollar bill and put a match to it. You know, that's not getting. Yeah, me. I don't know what the category was. Uh, I was I'm, I was boosting my book. Oh, okay. Yeah, not sure about that. A book on Facebook. I, I believe my personal opinion is the type of product you're trying to sell really affects how, what kind of uh, yeah, that makes sense. returns you get on Facebook. Like clothes at Christmas time, unreal. Really, really good. Uh, after Christmas, crap. Waste, waste of money. And I also wondered if the fact that I was always linking to my Amazon page if that had played any kind of part in it. I mean, oh. a lot of people do, but I wasn't like linking to my site. I was linking to Amazon. Right. Not yeah. sure. Yeah, I was uh, thinking about, uh, well, actually, I've seen too much bogus crap SEO stuff sold on Facebook by people who shouldn't be selling anything. Uh, that's why I think it's a good place because for SEOs, because the places where SEOs can now interact publicly with other SEOs has come down to it being pretty much just Facebook. Yeah. Yeah, because I do because I don't consider Twitter interaction at all. Twitter, yeah, I you might as well put a note up on the bulletin board and walk away. I mean, maybe somebody will walk by before the birds snatch it off of there, but don't bet on. To me, signal to noise ratio is oh, no, too high on the wrong side. And Facebook is where I do most of my. Uh, basically almost all of my social media work, but it's also where I do most of my interaction with others. In the, in the and another thing I've noticed, what I do get is notifications from Twitter, right? Like I don't follow everybody and their brother. I have a very small following actually, uh, less than 300 people, I think. Uh, so uh, when I get the notifications of what they were tweeting about, 
I don't need to look at Twitter. In fact, sometimes. So I guess so too. No, I have that. Uh, what is it called? The thing that takes uh, the best tweets from all of your tweets and puts them into like a. Oh, uh, not Tumblr. Uh, I forget. Something paper. Yeah. Paperly. What was that? Paperly, right? Yeah, that's it. Yeah, Paper got... LI. Yeah. Something like that. Well, anyhow, that's the only thing. Uh, lots of times, uh, if I want, I'll go and look at that because that is the best stuff from the people I follow. Now, to me, I, I get those email notifications on folks that I follow. And what I find personally find really annoying is I get the email, it gives me a link, you know, and I see their comment. But I cannot click through to what they posted. I have to click to Twitter and then go click on through to what they posted. Yeah. And I just I just find that, you know, it just gets under my skin that I've got to go to Twitter to see what I've got a snapshot of there's you know, a thumbnail there. It names the publication where it is, but it doesn't link to it. It links to Twitter. Damn it. If I wanted to hang out in that shit storm, I'd be there. Okay. <laughs> Not sure. So your channel doesn't work for you, huh? I I just find like Terry says the signal and noise ratio is so outrageous on Twitter. I just don't have the patience for it. And if I see something that is interesting, yeah. man, don't blink. Or you're going to have to go back through 600 tweets to, to maybe spot it, you know? There's no real easy way to search through stuff that you've written in the past or that you've seen in the past few yeah. months. What was the old, uh, they bought it and basically shut it down. There was a competitor. Tweet deck. Tweet deck. Tweet I deck. love Tweet deck because I can set up all my accounts. And, and yeah. keep that stuff and catalog it and sort it. And then it, and, and to me, I know some people prefer Hootsuite. I, I just never liked the way Hootsuite was set up. They the didn't. Try to use TweetDeck online, you know, through your browser is just a shit store. They had set up an API and people were using the API. So they started buying them and shutting them down, including TweetDeck. It was like one of the best ways. A lot of people uh, found to use Twitter, and they didn't like the data usage, so they got rid of it, even though it was popularizing the use of Twitter. I, I think it, when they shut that down, it had to have put a real ding in their activity level, because I know a lot of people use it, you know, so power users were using it. And, and I know an awful lot of people that were as social media managers for, you know, as, uh, you know, that was their gig. Yeah. Different companies, and, and they were handling, you know, 12, 14 different accounts every day. And they were all using TweetDeck. None of them liked Hootsuite. The only people that I found that liked Hootsuite were the people that were just casual tweet tweeters. You know? Donald Trump would not like Hootsuite, okay? <laughs> <laughs> Even though he only has one account. Well, actually, he's got two, but I mean, he, he would not like the way it works because he uses it so much. TweetDeck, the more you use it, the easier it was. Yeah. TweetDeck has too many people like Trump on it. That's yeah, why but, I don't like it. But, but you can filter it beautifully, too. You keep the crap out of, out of your... Yeah. You know what? It's too politically correct for me. You got these <laughs> trolls. Everybody has, you know, like, it's perfect for the Me Too crowd. You know what I mean? That's the kind of people who I think really thrive on Twitter. <laughs> you know, all that stuff, that's a result of Twitter. That Me Too stuff, all that stuff, right? That That's all the result of Twitter. And, you know, to well, me, it's 
I think Twitter certainly made popular the use of hashtags, but you know they they were kind of the groundbreaker on hashtags and and uh, trending stuff like that. And now a lot of others have jumped on the bandwagon with it. And I don't know if if Me Too can specifically be put on their plate, but really, you don't think that Bill Cosby would have had as many victims come forward as did if it wasn't as, as a result of social media. Well, really? no, now you're saying social media rather than just Twitter. Okay, now that's a little different story. You know, we're we're so inundated with so much information. Uh, a lot of it is totally false. Some of it is true, and it's very difficult to tell which is which. But we're so flooded with so much information these days as compared to 30, 40 years ago that yeah, anything. Uh, Something like that might have gone untalked about except in the National Enquirer 30 years ago. Which means the people just want to do it anonymously. Well, that's part of it. But I think, I think people, some people just feel in the know, important, okay? That's how they want, yeah, right, right. They want to feel important, and that is a medium to do it. Mm -hmm. And that all, you know, it just snowballed to where it was every day, you know? And a lot of times people get white, you get washed with a brush that maybe they didn't deserve. Oh, absolutely. You know, when, it, when things are decided in social media, to me it's, uh, you know, look, if it wasn't for our job, I wouldn't have joined Facebook for nothing. Like, I could care less about all that and stuff. I, and I know it ain't one of your favorite plus spots to hang out even because, with your job. <laughs> <laughs> right. I very seldom used it even for the job. And, but because I never really saw it as a, a, look, if I can't show my customers what I did, to me, social media is just smoke and mirrors. Right? You can't really quantify much of it. Yeah. Yeah, it's... it's the metrics are all... And then when you, when you do quantify it, 